My next guest entered the scene as a stand-up comic and debuting member of the Queens of Comedy. She transitioned into television and film, winning numerous awards and nominations, and became the host of her very own talk show. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Academy Award-winning actress and comedian, the legend herself, darling, Monique. <laughs> hey, my baby! Hey, my baby! Hey, my oh baby! My Monique! Oh my God! Listen, I, I just got to tell you that I am, I am, I am so grateful and honored that you are sitting here with me because you know you are a, 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 an extreme queen of comedy and a, a comedian that I have looked up to my entire life. But the real reason I'm so excited to have you here is because I just want to start out. The last time that we were together yes. was about four years ago on this exact date. Wow. Four years ago, we were trying to do the Queen's Court. My former co-host and I um, were on the charts and we were, we, were, we were hot and boiling and we were the show to go to. Mm -hmm. And you were gonna be our first guest that I felt was gonna solidify us as the show that every, every A-list celebrity comes through, banter and talk stuff with us, whatever. But we had technical difficulties yes. and everything fell apart. Yes. And we separated and it was a very dark time for me because after me and my former co-host separated, it got really nasty, really ugly, and I didn't get the opportunity to really work with you like I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so for me, today is such an important day because this is an, uh, a full circle moment for me. Yes. And I wanna tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart for then and now. Because one thing I've learned from this is that God does everything for a reason and everything happens in its own perfect timing. Let me just say this first, thanks for having me. And I don't know if it's me that's solidifying your show, it is you that is solidifying your show. It is you that wouldn't quit and wouldn't stop and kept going. Because four years ago, what did impress me with it was, and that beautiful sister's name is Kaya, yeah. if I'm correct, her name is. is Kaya. And what impressed me with you during that time, because I had never met y'all, mm -hmm. what made me wanna come on the show was, I saw y'all doing a, um, a Queen's Court, mm -hmm. and Kaya was saying, I stand with Monique, mm -hmm. I support that sister. I'm like, I so appreciate that, I wanna go do their show. So that day, when the, the technical difficulties started happening, I didn't take it personal. I just knew that, you know, maybe she was flustered or a little frustrated, but it wasn't personal. But what impressed me the most was you stayed in it. Yeah. It was so much going on behind you. Baby walls was coming down. Do you hear me? It was going on. Yeah. It was going down. Yes. This baby stayed just like this in the camera. Trying. And, I, and you know who? <laughs> baby, she never let the makeup melt. She stayed right there. Miss Monique, if you give us five more minutes, yes. we're just trying. To, we're working through this the best we can. I was like. I love you. Yes, I'll give you five more minutes. So for it to come full circle and to see you being the shining star that you are. And when I say star, I don't mean celebrity sense. I say it in the sense of your gift has allowed you to allow other people to be free. Yeah. So I'm always appreciative of people that says, I am who I am, I'm unapologetic about it. And you said something the other night on the phone that just blew me away. What I said on the phone? I don't know if we can say this here. As you said something to me that was so um, amongst girls, mm -hmm. but it was so honest. And you said, Monique, I still have my d I said, <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Right. She said, and that is my connection to God. I said, you better give it to God. You better <laughs> give it to God. So I just appreciate your honesty, baby. Come on now. Come on. I mean, you were going through this whole big old thing with Netflix. What's, what's been going on with that since? Well, we're actually still in the midst oh. of the lawsuit. We're still in it. And, um, you know, I, I think that 
When I first had to say, I've got to speak up and speak out, and I've got to say boycott this because it's blatantly unfair. It's blatant. It's so in our face that we oftentimes get so fearful that we just say, okay, I'll just let this one ride. Because if you notice, when I did come out and say something, our sister Wanda Sykes said, you know what, Monique, I stand with you because they offered me half, less than half of what they offered you. Wow. So when we get that, and then she got a special on Netflix because she said they moved the comma. Beautiful. What happens is we're all in a position to always be so afraid that we just let it ride and we go somewhere else. So when I had to take that stand against Netflix and say, we can't tolerate this anymore, y'all. We can't do this anymore. Here you have our white sister, Amy Schumer, saying, I'm not a legend and I should not get what the legends get because Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle had gotten the deals they got. And let me be clear, they deserve them. But when you're having a conversation with Netflix and they say, we believe Monique is a legend too. Well, why is my legend different from Chris Rock's legend, from Dave Chappelle's legend? And when that white woman says, I'm no legend, so I shouldn't get what they're getting, but I should get more. And they negotiate and she gets $2 million more, which gives her $13 million for that special. But then you offer me a half a million dollars. Mm. Once you say to my team, we believe Monique is a legend. Well, why is my legend so different than anybody else's legend? So I had to stand up and speak out unapologetically and fearlessly. I had to make, take that position and that stand so for the little girl coming behind me, she won't have to go through the same fight. And I say it humbly when you have the resume that I have. And again, I say that humbly once you've put in the work, but then you get treated like you should just be thankful we're welcoming you to the party. Right. So I'm still in the midst of that loss. And so you still, you still fighting it. Yes. Um, after that came out, then you were on this whole situation with Oprah and Tyler. Everyone's mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Monique? What happened? I did a movie called Precious. Uh -huh, I loved it. I signed up for that movie with my friend named Lee Daniels. He said, it's paying $50,000. I said, let's do it, because it was an independent film, mm -hmm. okay? When we did the contract, he said, you have 5% of the film. We're not looking for nothing. We know this is a small independent film. The film goes to Sundance, and it begins to get all of this praise. Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey get involved with Precious. Okay. They become executive producers. That's wonderful, because you know when they put their name to it, here you go, it's getting ready to mm -hmm. go through the roof. So when it came time for the campaigning of this award for the Oscar, and when it came time to go to different festivals and, and promote this movie, mm -hmm. but you're really campaigning for the awards, well, I was in a position, I had the Monique show, I was doing the Queens of Comedy tour, I had little babies, and my third husband. So what I was not gonna do was make Hollywood the priority. I've already done the movie. I don't need to campaign for you now to say, I want this trophy, I've done the movie, I've done my part. I get a call from Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey says, I will send my private jet to come get you and bring you to, I want to say, it was one of the festivals. And I said, sis, I'm in the bed with my man and my babies eating chips, watching Curious George. Tell him I said, I appreciate it and I love him, but I'm not going to be able to make that one. About 10 minutes later, I get a call back from Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels said, I told you you didn't care about this. I told that. I told her you ain't care nothing about this. And it's not that I don't care nothing about it. It's just that my priorities wasn't that. I've already done my part, okay? The Hoodie Awards come up with Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry is there. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me into his room. He has a staff of people there. He does like this. 
and everybody disperses. Oh, wait a minute, do it again, Monique. Oh. And everybody disperses except for my security. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. So everything I'm saying, there's has always been someone else there to hear what's happened. So we're sitting there and Tyler says to me, listen, you may want to campaign for this because if you get nominated, your next film will be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next film is five to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, look at me. I'm a black woman. Where they do that at? Those aren't the, sal the salaries that we're going to get. He said, oh, no, no, no. If you just campaign, I'm telling you right now. I said, Tyler, I cannot do a song and dance. I have no contract with Lionsgate. I have no contract with you, with Oprah. The only person I had a contract with was Lee Daniels. Right. And I fulfilled my contract. Mm. Now, if anybody else wants me to do anything else, there's a price to that because what we're not in is slavery. So what I cannot do is work for y'all for free. So Tyler Perry says, well, I think outside the box and I'm not scared of them white boys. So, you know, I'm just trying to tell you for your own good. Well, if you think outside the box, and you're not scared of those white boys, why are you trying to tell me to do something that I'm not contractually obligated to do? So then I said, well, listen, I don't care where the money comes from. Pay me. I don't care where the money comes from. If you, he said, well, I'm not in the business of writing checks for free. I said, and I'm not in the business for working for free. So we have a mutual agreement. No problem. We got up, we hugged, everything is good when they knew that I was not going to be the actress or be the one to say, because it's them, I got to do it. No, I don't care who it is. That's not fair for you to want me to work for free just because it's you. So now here comes the black ball. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about that. Now here comes, she's difficult to work with. She, her and her husband, they are difficult. They, they are these difficult people. So now nobody's going to touch Monique because Oprah Winfrey said nothing. Though there was a conversation that she had with my husband and she agreed with the position that was being taken. So when it hit that I was difficult, she stayed quiet and said nothing. When we find out that Tyler Perry has actually told another director named David Talbert how difficult I was to work with. And David Talbert told Tyler Perry, he said, Monique was a joy. Like I didn't have any problem. Yeah, well, she was really difficult to work with when we worked with her. Well, Tyler Perry, you never worked with me. We never worked together. When we did Pressures, you came on after we said, cut, that's a wrap and it's over. So now we sit in that. And that's been um, a decade. Yeah. That's been a decade. And Tyler Perry called my husband and I. Yes. And we recorded that conversation. And Tyler Perry in that conversation says, what I did to you was wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, I did hear that conversation. I, I, I was privy to hear that conversation and Monique is telling the truth. I've had people call Tyler Perry. Al Sharpton called Tyler Perry and from my understanding, Tyler Perry was like, listen, I don't wanna revisit that. I don't have nothing to say about it. Kevin Hart called Tyler Perry. I don't wanna revisit, I don't have nothing to say about it. Now when Al Sharpton heard the tape, cause he heard it. He said, that man is wrong, and you're like my daughter, so I'm going to have to call him up. Kevin Hart heard the tape. He said, Mo, I called him, and he said he don't want to revisit it. And I didn't push that. I was grateful that he kept his word, and he called. Our mutual friend, when I explained what was really going down, she was like, I'm not with that. Let me call him. And she called him. And he said, I don't want to revisit that. Then he called back while we were on the phone and he said, no, I changed my mind. I will, we, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. And then she has to apologize to me and Oprah Winfrey for saying that we had anything to do with ruining her career. Now that was recent. So as I sit here with you and you say, wait a minute, I heard that man say he was wrong. Yes, I did hear it. And was going to apologize. Well, that's turned into now, I'll meet with you, not with your husband, and now you have to apologize to me. How does that happen? And I'll tell you how, and I want to look right into the camera if I can. 
Oftentimes when it comes to a black woman speaking up and speaking out, it goes unheard until she dies. Mm. Then once she dies, then we go back and say, well, she was right and let's make a movie about it. See, I can give you their names, Eartha Kitt. I can give you their names, Hazel Scott. I can give you their names, Fannie Lou Hamer. I can give you their names, Hattie McDaniel. All of those women took a stand. And all of those women left here heartbroken, unhealthy, looking at a community saying, y'all know I'm right, but why won't anybody say anything? People will ask me, do you dislike or are you, do you hate Oprah and Tyler and Lee? No, let me be clear. I love those people. We love those people. My husband and I love, they're our brothers and sisters. Mm. And as my husband always say, mama, we ain't calling nobody out. We simply calling them up to say, listen, let's make our community better by making it right. Not keep running and hiding behind what you consider is your power. And I will also say this, you've been the first one brave enough. I'm sorry, and my brother Tav is smiling. I wanna make sure I'm always playing fair. Y'all two have been the first ones brave enough to say, I heard it. I did. And I heard what that man said. So now as a community, what do we do about that?